I guess it's true that sometimes the best thing is if you don't have anything good to say, just don't say anything at all. And most certainly when it's come to TNA, I got to that point where I no longer had anything good to say about the company. So I just chose to stop watching them, stop following them, stop really paying all that much attention to them, and stop really saying anything about them whatsoever for the most part. I just didn't see where it was productive. I just didn't see where it was a good use to do my time. However, sometimes, you know, you get to a point where it's so bad, it's so ridiculous, it's so stupid, that you can't sweep it under the rug. You can't turn the other cheek. You can't turn a blind eye. You can't ignore it. The stupidity is there, and it's ever-present, and everybody knows it. I mean, and when it comes to TNA, there's one thing above all else they are, is stupid. Just stupid. How stupid are they? Well, let me give you some examples of just how stupid this company is. Now, I'm not going to go back over the previous 12-plus years of history, because we'll be here all the live-long day talking about this crap. But just some recent things, and up to and including the build-up to Slammiversary, Slammiversary itself, and the follow-up and aftermath of Slammiversary. But let's start with this. We're talking about TNA. This is how stupid this company is. Their Twitter handle is the name of their weekly primetime show, not the company name. Their Twitter handle, again, I emphasize, is their show, not the company name. So if you go to look to follow TNA on Twitter, you can't follow at TNA to follow the wrestling company. you got to follow Impact Wrestling. How stupid is this? This would be like the WWE sitting there and making their Twitter handle at Raw or at SmackDown and in no way, shape, or form putting the actual WWE freaking company name in there. And if they were actually going to create Twitter handles for those shows, they would at least be smart enough to have at WWE Raw, at WWE SmackDown, or at least they'd be smart enough to make sure that they had their own Twitter handle at WWE. But not TNA. No, no, no. We're going to have at Impact Wrestling as our freaking Twitter handle. That's how stupid this company is. Furthermore, if you go to look at TNA, maybe you haven't watched for a while, and you're like, I'll go type in TNA.com. Their website is their show name, not the fucking company name. So imagine the confusion when somebody types in TNA.com and they get ImpactWrestling.com. How do you, how do you expect anybody to recognize your name, your brand, your identity whatsoever? How the hell do you expect to have any name, brand, or identity recognition when your freaking website, along with your Twitter handle, is named after your weekly show on primetime, not the name of the damn company. Are you TNA or are you Impact Wrestling? How can you be so confused? How could you sit there and put yourself in a position to confuse the fans? How can you be so fucking stupid? That's just ridiculous. Think about it this way, too. They bring in a company to help find them a new television deal when they were in a bad way. So, of course, United Talent got him a television contract with Destination America where they got stuck in a freaking Friday night death time slot of 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern because they're fucking stupid. Furthermore, they signed off on a deal that got negotiated that allowed Destination America to have an out nine months after the deal was consummated because TNA is stupid. And furthermore, how stupid is TNA? They got a TV contract with a non-exclusive wrestling deal, meaning that other wrestling companies like ROH could come out of the same damn network, run on the same damn night to eventually replace them. That's how stupid TNA freaking is. And for those of you wondering how this is a bad thing, or what makes this a bad thing? Are you that fucking stupid? How fucking stupid could a company be? You negotiate a freaking TV deal that allows Destination America to put anything on there. So if they got a WWE program, they put WWE in front of them. Does that sound like a good fucking idea? This is how stupid DNA is. They've re-signed Bram four times in a freaking year. And to make it so bad, when called out on it, they can't even explain all four times that Bram's been re-signed. To try and sit there, put up a good solid front, in this day and age, knowing that people are going to pay attention to this, knowing people are going to track this, and knowing there's going to be evidence with screenshots and everything else in your Twitter history, to go back to reference this, 
You decided anyway, fuck it, you're going to resign the same guy four times a year and expect everybody to just turn a blind eye to him like nothing's going on here and nothing smells fishy. Why? Because you're fucking stupid. They resign the same guy four times in a year. How stupid is that? But then we get to the actual road to Slammiversary. Kurt Angle was on your Slammiversary poster. Your world champion, because again, Destination America told you they wanted as the champion, because that's the good way to run a wrestling company, right? So you advertise the guy, your world champion, for your first pay per view event since you got out of Destination America, your first pay per view event, your real pay per view event in eight months, and he's not booked on the damn show! You're expecting people to pay real their pay per view prices when there's no world champion on the show and there's no world title match! Furthermore, you're using a pay-per-view as a go-home show for your upcoming TV tapings that have already been recorded before the freaking pay-per-view. You basically used your first pay-per-view since Bound for Glory, your first pay-per-view in eight months, as a go-home show for a free show and as an overpriced one-night-only show. How stupid can you be? Oh, wait, there's more. One of the big deals on the impact before this shit that was Slammiversary was the return of Jeff and Karen Jarrett. So let me get this straight. TNA is using precious primetime television time that they don't know how much longer they're going to have to promote another wrestling company in Global Force Wrestling who themselves has no television deal whatsoever. And most certainly, no way for TNA to really benefit on the flip side. After so many years of being Spike's TV's guinea pig, where they would trot out shit for Bellator and all this other crap, and TNA would have to promote it with absolutely no return for them whatsoever, no benefit for them whatsoever, they decided out of their own free will to enter into this type of arrangement again, and this time with another wrestling company that's just starting out. A company with no national television deal. You're giving Jeff and Karen Jarrett television time that you need to promote their company, not yours. You're building to an invasion angle with GFW, Global Force Wrestling, not ROH. You're doing an invasion angle with a company, again, that has no television deal on a national basis of their own. All the while, you've got a company that logically you would think would make for a great partner for an invasion angle because they're on your same network running a show ahead of you. Instead of trying to do business with ROH, who has multiple outlets for national television between their Sinclair deal and Destination America, you go to freaking Global Force Wrestling, Global Force Wrestling, that just sat there and ran their debut show in Pearl, Mississippi to approximately 150 people. You're giving your precious prime time Wednesday night television time for these guys that just drew 150 people in Mississippi to promote their crappy brand that has no national television deal. Furthermore, you brought back a King of the Mountain match, a stupid concept in itself, so that way you could create a freaking title for Jeff Jarrett to freaking win like it's freaking 2002 or 2003. It's bad enough when I turn on WWE television still and I see Triple H and Stephanie running amok and being featured all over the freaking place. Again, like it's 2002 or 2003. I come to TNA and they're creating titles for Jeff Jarrett to win like it's the same damn time frame. I'm looking forward to 2016 like I was once looking forward to 2004. They created a title for a guy who has since left the company, not a part of your active roster, not a part of the company, that is running his own wrestling promotion to come on your pay-per-view and fucking win. They may have been a Jeff Jarrett on a TNA pay-per-view in 2015 and had him win the King of the Mountain title. Just like you were doing with that stupid Japanese fucking company run by the great Muda, Wrestle One. You're using your big freaking show to put on another damn wrestling promotion. How stupid can you freaking be? Your television time that you have a limited amount of, that you don't even know how much longer you're going to have it for, to be able to utilize. So you're stupid enough to give that time to another freaking company that again has no television deal. 
You're so stupid you're building to an invasion angle that nobody wants to fucking see. Within a company that nobody wants to see, as proven by the 150 people they drew to their damn debut. And all the while you created a title for the founder of your company to win, now that he's running another damn promotion after four days of freaking building up to this. It's 2015 and Jeff Jarrett is still main eventing and winning titles on TNA pay-per-views. Again, a pay-per-view where you had already recorded several impacts after the fact. A pay-per-view that you were creating as an overpriced one-night-only show eight months after your last pay-per-view, your first pay-per-view, since you got on Destination America. Fucking Christ. But that that's not it. There's more. Just how stupid is TNA? After the crap that was Slammiversary 2015, Dixie Carter tells one of the fans to stop hating. I was expecting her to say stop hating, darling. You are the president of a wrestling company, Dixie. And you in any way, shape, or form think that it's a good idea to interact on Twitter with people in this capacity whatsoever? Doesn't this seem like an incredibly stupid waste of freaking time? Never mind the fact that you seem now to be more fascinated with your own TV reality show project than you are trying to get this company to be fucking run right and head in the right direction. You dumbass is sitting there telling fans on Twitter to stop hating. How stupid can you be? Instead of complaining about the fans complaining, how about doing something to fix it so that way the fans don't complain? Maybe if your company wasn't stupid and your show didn't stuff, suck, fans wouldn't hate. Did you ever think of that? But as is always the case with TNA, it's blame everybody else but them fucking selves. And then Eric Young. Somebody who wrestled in the main event of this damn crap fest that was Slammiversary 2015 for this crap fest of a company. Sits there and tweets to people that if they watched Slammiversary and they didn't like it, go fuck yourself. So you're assuming, first of all, that anybody would actually be stupid enough to pay for this shit. Of course, there are going to be a few people stupid enough to pay for this shit. But you were stupid enough to go on Twitter and insult the few paying customers that you fucking have. Does that make any sense whatsoever? At a time where you need all the money you can fucking get. At a time where you need all the attention and support that you get. Instead of blasting the people that didn't watch that are hating it. You're blasting the people that did pay money to watch it and did watch it and didn't like it. And you're telling them to go fuck yourselves and then later on you're trying to backtrack. You're trying to delete your tweet. Too late. It's already fucking happened, dumbass. And you're saying to people that say that they hope the company goes out of business that they're bad people because they're hoping that hundreds of people and families are affected and they lose their jobs and everything else. Well, when you tell fans <clears throat> that are trying to support your product to go fuck themselves, then frankly, they should feel that way. And frankly, with this type of cavalier attitude, you fucking deserve it. No, Eric Young, it's not us go fuck ourselves. It's you go fuck yourself. And TNA, go fuck yourself. Stop hating. How about stop hating on the fans and start hating on yourselves? TNA has nobody to blame for, for all this shit but themselves. The reason being because they're fucking stupid. But instead, they live in this goddamn fantasy world bubble where they sit there and think that a global farce wrestling invasion is going to be the ticket to get the people buzzing. That Jeff Jarrett winning a title, main eventing a pay-per-view in 2015 is good for business. How fucking stupid can a company be? People talk shit about how bad WCW used to be back in 2000, 2001. I assure you, I watched it back then. It was bad. And it was stupid. But this is an entirely greater level of bad and an entirely different level of stupid. Of all the stupid in the history of professional wrestling, TNA indeed might top the list for being the stupidest company of all damn times. An invasion angle with a company that doesn't have a TV deal that drew 150 people to their debut show. Stupid.